All right, it's time for base chart. I told you that we're going to be talking about bonds, but even before we do that, Ken, uh, there is this issue of um, we talked about it last Friday, actually, um, credit repair framework uh, by the central bank. Then, then we saw NCBA yesterday while releasing the results. They are hoping to actually Emshuari and Fuliza. People who've defaulted on that, NCBA is writing off quite a huge amount. Um, remember that uh, the outstanding value of NPLs disbursed through digital platforms was estimated at 30 billion shillings at the end of October. Out of this, Fuliza and Emshwari combined account for 22.5 billion. Yeah? That's, and this uh, spanning over a 10 year period with a significant part under the overdraft facility shared by Safaricom and KCB uh, for Lisa. This means NCBA Bank, which controls the lion's share of the digital lending market of about 75%, will cancel the largest share of these loans at 11.25 billion shillings. Um, and this is, this is quite a move right there. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about banks who are in, in, in the digital lending space and this repair framework? I think it's a positive story. Mm -hmm. um, if you think of the total labor force in Kenya, as I said last week, it's about 20 million working people. Mm -hmm. If a third of that is, has been blacklisted, then you're talking of a significant part of the labor force that okay. can transact. Yeah, so can let me just cut you short, even as we sort your sound. Um, let us take a look at um, actually this particular issue of uh, Fuliza, where NCBS says it has delisted over 5 million Kenyans already with negative credit records at CRBs. This is in line with uh, the credit repair framework. Actually, let's listen into um, more on this particular item. Where uh, millions of customers who are today negatively listed to the credit reference bureaus mm -hmm. and are uh, either suffering some form of intended or like intended it, yeah. sanction uh, with regards uh, or resulting from their credit uh, records at the CRB, what we offer the relief of about 180 days starting from 1st of December. So we've already instituted this change. Uh, we've already completed the reclassification yep. of more than five. Tira mugi ako kwa waiting room. Mebu ulisa mark. These are customers. The communication mark. Tira mugi ako kwa waiting room. Began going out from yesterday. All of these customers have had their records with the three credit reference bureaus updated to uh, reflect a positive status. With the CRB, which then means that any sanctions uh, owing to your credit so okay. uh, reference bureau status is now uh, you now have that relief for the next uh, six. All right, so you have heard it from the horse's mouth in regards to credit uh, repair framework and how players in the digital lending space are reacting to that, and. Um, Actually, in line also with our discussion today, uh, President William Ruto yet again proposed his plans uh, to actually this issue of, of borrowing is becoming quite a challenge. But I want to come back to this discussion, Ken, that we had just started now. And uh, our focus today will be actually on bonds, yeah? Borrowing from the local market, which is quite a concern. We've discussed this time and again when we borrow from the local market, there's the crowd out effect. But just bringing us up to date on some numbers where Kenya's stock of domestic debt currently stands at 4.37 trillion shillings, of which 691 billion shillings is held in T bills and 3.5. Uh, 6 trillion shillings in bonds. Now, the country has 8.7 trillion shillings in both domestic and external debt. This is equivalent to 62% of GDP. Uh, we've, we have an IMF program ongoing. We have received 188 billion shillings from them already. And uh, also data from Treasury shows that the government is expected to service 461.4 billion shillings in redemptions and 553 billion shillings uh, in interest on domestic debt in the current financial year. There le it leaves the government with a very small fiscal space to operate in. Yes, indeed, Noah. Um, every country has two types of debt. 
you have uh, domestic debt and uh, your foreign debt and each comes with its own challenges. Uh, domestic debt uh, sometimes tends to crowd out the private sector mm -hmm. because much of the money goes to government uh, but also foreign debt is exposed to exchange rate risk. So if the exchange rate moves from 120 to 123, mm -hmm. the country's debt goes much higher. And economists are always debating which is better, domestic debt or more foreign debt. I've always said domestic debt is much better mm -hmm. because it's in your own currency, so you're the master of your own destiny mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, uh, foreign, ex for foreign debt. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good thing that, and what we are seeing right now is the Treasury uh, CS is trying to lengthen the maturity of these uh, of these debt profiles mm -hmm. and that you can only do with domestic debt so i think it lends credence to the argument that it's much better to have domestic debt yes you talk about crowding out uh, but if you look at the credit of the private sector that the numbers we saw from the mpc mm -hmm. those numbers have gone up from 12 to 13 percent so it still shows there's enough money to go to the private sector so i think it's a good move to try and create that fiscal space mm -hmm. it gives you some breathing room uh, but the question is what will you do with that breathing room Will you invest in productivity gains, in agriculture, things that will boost the economy? I think that's where the key question is. But it's a good thing to get that fiscal space. Okay. Uh, and, I mean, as you say, domestic debt, um, first of all, denominated in our very own currency. So that fluctuation <coughs> and currency fluctuation, it doesn't really impact. Uh, then uh, I think inflation, sometimes it's into it. Uh, but let's talk about what what the president says. Mm -hmm. If we go to the market, in the bond market, and uh, we get it 14%, we have to relook at this particular issue. Is it, is it wise to let the forces of you know, demand and supply in the bonds market play as they should? Uh, with the coupon rates that we're seeing, this 14%, how sustainable are they? I think the president's intentions are very good. Mm -hmm. uh, we are borrowing at very high rates. Uh, when you have a treasury bond of 14% risk-free, uh, there will be no other investment to any part of the economy. So I think what the president is trying to do is to signal that we need to have lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. And when you have lower interest rates, then uh, the crowding out effect is less because people are able to push money in other parts of the economy. Uh, the question is, can you legislate interest rates? Um, absolutely not. Uh, but if you can use market techniques, to bring down interest rates, mm. then absolutely, I mean, that's what made the Kibaki presidency very, very successful. It was able to bring down those interest rates to the point where banks had to lend money to the private sector mm. because the returns in government bonds were very little. So I think it's a good goal mm. that the president is setting. A lot of people, I think, misinterpreted it to mean that we are legislating it. Mm. That's not the case. But I think it's, it's good to set that goal, okay. then allow Treasury to use the market dynamics, which really means reducing government borrowing mm -hmm. for you to be able to bring down those interest rates. What are those techniques that Kibaki use that uh, can be, you know, applied in this context? Uh, well, two of them. One of all, the first one is a strengthening revenue collection. Mm -hmm. Really, the KRA, as we know it today, uh, got its strength during the Kibaki administration. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, KRA was an entity that many people didn't quite know. So the ability to raise revenue in a consistent way. And number two, cutting back on, on, on wastage. And we've seen uh, some measures towards cutting back. So when you increase revenue and reduce on, uh, on wastages, mm -hmm. then you reduce the borrowing, the deficit. Mm -hmm. And that deficit is what drives up interest rates. If you reduce that borrowing, then naturally interest rates start coming down in a natural way. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, people would observe especially the rate at which we've been borrowing from the local market as much as it's uh, preferable compared to the external market. The rate at which so far the government has done it in a very sh short span of time. Should that be a worrying precedence? Should they go slow on especially issuing out these infrastructure bonds? Uh, what's the interpretation of all this? Well, I think what they're trying to do is get some space. I think the, the maturities were becoming a source of uh, cash strain. Yes. You could not get any cash for anything else because you're paying the creditors. So I think the idea of getting some latitude, some breathing room, it's a good thing mm -hmm. uh, so that money can also go to other parts of the economy mm -hmm. to health, education and security. So that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, the question is, 
yes, you can kick that can down the road, uh, but in the meantime, are you also investing in the real economy? Are you strengthening farmers? Are you strengthening SMEs? And that's where those other programs will come into light, particularly with the hustler fund that we expect to see this coming week. Mm. Those are the things that now we hope, as you kick the can down the road, you're able to build in strength within the economy so that you get enough revenue so that when those future maturities come, you have enough revenue to pay them off. Yeah, and, and, and quite quite a, a segue. You mentioned Haslef, and uh, this week I think AQT was releasing their Q3 results, and we saw James Moengi talk about, you know, farming up Haslef, <coughs> almost 250 billion shillings in terms of our private sector players and taking advantage of, of this excitement and this opportunity do you think there is more room for more people to come and play in the whole structure of hustler fund absolutely i think it needs to be spread out across not just a few banks mm. but across circles mm. many kenyans interact more with circles than with banks mm. so i think if they can be able to get as many players as possible particularly banks and circles and even microfinances absolutely that is where the rubber meets the road mm -hmm. and if that money can go to the kiosk owner can go to the small farmer can go to the person owning that car wash that's when money starts circulating within the community so i think the more players on board the more successful the fund is likely to be no that, that's quite interesting anyway so uh, the issue about swapping so the central bank uh, slotted an infrastructure bond uh, maturing in six years seeking to raise 87.8 billion shillings from investors who already are holding T-bills issued of course issue number 249491 these are specific ones 2454 um, quite a number of them the debt is maturing in 91 days six months one year and over two years respectively investors who hold these instruments have until November 30th to apply for switching to the longer term infrastructure bond. Uh, I know you've mentioned buying time mm -hmm. and creating some room mm -hmm. because now these uh, these bills are maturing mm -hmm. short term. Um, how sustainable is 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 this swapping method? Uh, are there practical examples that we have seen it works and creates more latitude for, for government to operate uh, a healthier fiscal uh, regime? I think the success rate will depend on what you call the sweeteners mm. that are put into it. Uh, the infrastructure bond is tax-free, so that's one of the sweeteners that they might get uh, people to, to enjoy, mm. as opposed to the regular bonds and bills. Uh, then you're also locking in a very good rate. Right now, bonds are what almost 14 percent. So any investor would want to uh, lock in into that. So I think those are sort of like the small techniques they'll use. But as I said, you have to apply mm -hmm. to get it. So the question is, what if people don't apply, and what if people have a different outlook of the future yes. and they want to just cash it right now? Now that uh, is could be an issue, yes. and that has to be something that they have to address. But the fact that they'll try to load a lot of sweeteners, I think will make it al al very attractive, particularly to the institutional investors mm -hmm. who tend to be the big players in this um, kind of activities. Yeah, and actually uh, this week, we are, <coughs> in one of the days we tackle thematically the issue of pensions, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we're just looking at how, how, you know, these guys have a pool of good money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, close, uh, is it 1.5 trillion there about? Quite a huge pool. Now, majority of the investment there in government securities, mm -hmm. when you look at, at some of the banks, like it's a very secure when you place your, your money in, in bonds. But now there's been this talk, uh, partner with us. So local players saying, instead of you going to borrow heavily, why don't you partner with the industry, yeah? like pensions industry and let us work together it will lessen that debt burden because you already have resources pulled together w what is the space of that uh, for that in this current ecosystem i think the space is huge i think uh, fund managers for a long time have just been enjoying putting their money in government securities mm -hmm. almost uh, two-thirds sometimes of pension funds either between real estate and pension funds so it's it's a lazy way of making money and if you took a look at your typical pension fund manager 
They're very well educated. These are people who have done CFAs, have done finance, have done economics, and they know all the tools. So I think there's a deep desire to diversify in the market, whether it's into other asset classes. So I think what they are seeing right now is some of these big projects, infrastructure projects, the affordable housing projects. I think they see it as an exciting opportunity, A, to diversify, because there are some laws where you have to di diversify within your pension fund, but also to engage the real economy. You know, some of them ask, you know, if you look at the highway between the Mausami time highway, mm -hmm. it's being funded by the French pension funds. You know, why should pension funds come from France when, as you've said, you have 1.5 trillion mm -hmm. that can be mobilized locally. So I think there's a deep desire on both sides from pension funds to diversify, to get into more exciting projects, and also for the government to be able to reduce uh, sort of like its debt uh, to, to, to some of these pension funds, which is quite expensive. I know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's quite interesting. In, in terms, you've spoken of sweeteners. And uh, I know Fridays when people break, break a lot of rules <laughs> when you talk about sweeteners. I'm not taking sugar Friday. Ah, you're there with your cake. Uh, but uh, I was wondering, uh, what other incentives, yeah? Can we, can we move uh, the, the ecosystem from the lazy way of doing things, mm -hmm. quote unquote lazy, because it seems very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, security, government security, you are safe, you are earning your money, uh, you are assured of your return. Uh, from that to investing in, in, in more riskier mm -hmm. endeavors, mm -hmm. but which do hold uh, more benefit. To, to the country. Is there space for legislative mm -hmm. uh, push a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, is, what kind of mindset change do we need to experience? I think it starts with our fiscal policy, mm -hmm. really looking at how do we uh, lower our, how do we lower interest rates in the market? Because as long as you have risk-free returns at 14%, everybody will crowd to those. So how do we come up with a fiscal policy that takes back those returns to less than 10% mm. in the single digits. Once you do that, naturally everybody else will want to look at other returns because even these fund managers, they have to report returns. So if they're getting 5% from government securities, it means they'll have to work harder to put their money in other areas. Mm. So naturally it begins with fiscal policy, reducing government interest rates on government securities so that there is now money going into the real economy mm -hmm. but unless but until we are we are there we'll still be in the in the cut in, in the in the current uh slope that we are in but i do believe with what the president has signaled if they can use market techniques to do that we should be able to see uh this pension fund and if you go to countries like japan you know where interest rates are very low you find government pension funds putting money in innovation hubs putting money in so many other things mm -hmm. because the returns are so little on government security. So we need, in fact, I keep saying returns on government securities need to be at where inflation is, not more. Mm -hmm. We just need to shield people from effects of inflation. Any additional return should be coming from uh, investments in the real economy. So I think when you have that mindset, uh, because you asked what kind of mindset, I'd say the private sector growth mindset. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is when we'll be able to achieve those. And these you have to juxtapose and mm -hmm. balance with the current environment that we're in. Uh, just uh, you saw MPC, uh, the central bank rate going up by 50 basis points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they say it's trying to manage especially inflation that we're facing right now. All, all this, yeah. Government has to balance that amidst all this time. All, we are also seeing tightening uh, of, of the fiscal space uh, from, uh, I mean, from the monetary policy perspective. How, how does that, that juggle briefly as we finish? I think you're absolutely right. Um, the central bank, many people will argue that you do need high interest rates to maintain investors' appetite. So there are foreign investors, maybe who sit in New York, and they look at returns on various government securities. And if they find the returns are high, they'll pump in their money. Mm -hmm. So the people who say it's important to maintain high interest rates to attract uh, that foreign capital that comes with that, particularly if you're an importing country and your currency is always uh, exposed. Uh, but I think the mindset that we do need, uh, the CBK has been very clear about it, is growing the economy mm -hmm. and creating jobs. 
and they talked about the 5.2 percent that we are seeing in Q2 mm. and investments in agriculture. So I think we need to move our conversation towards job creation, okay. expanding the economy, mm. and really domesticating a lot of our production. Because right. when you have a domesticated production, you stop worrying so much about your exchange rate when much of your things are being are produced locally. All right, definitely. Mm. Ken, thank you very much. Mm. And uh, as you always advise, uh, we don't do anything. <laughs> I don't do anything that you wouldn't do, yeah? <laughs> what a chart we've had. <laughs> thank you very much, Ken. Thank you very much. Yeah, that yeah. was this chart, yeah? We take a short break right now on business today. When you come back, we have something from our Federation of Kenyan Employees. Stay tuned.